What is up, baddies? Welcome back to my channel. I am Talaja Mo, and, and today I have a really fun tutorial, DIY, whatever you want to call it for you guys, on how I went from this plain old oversized Ross shirt into a two-piece biker short set. The bikers, ugh, I can't even talk, but y'all get what I'm saying. It's really cute, and I got this shirt from Ross from for seven dollars, and it's also an extra large. And I usually fit a size medium, so yeah, that could help if you fit a size small i would still suggest you to get a size extra large in the shirt too so yeah so first thing i did was got a pair of my favorite biker shorts to use as a template and i also turned my shirt inside out and i just went along and i just started to size everything up and see how i wanted to cut so this is me just basically thinking how i was going to cut any everything before i actually did it because once you cut you cannot go back so Please make sure you are being extra particular, especially with a cute shirt like this, because I would have been so mad if I messed this up. But yeah, um, I'm just thinking about how I want to cut everything out. So just watch how I cut, and you guys can kind of see where I went with this project. I just wanted to make sure that you know to leave at least a half inch to an inch of seam allowance around the whole perimeter of your project. And what seam allowance allows you to do is to not actually cut the pattern to be too small. So make sure that you guys are leaving that seam allowance because I almost forgot in a couple of other of my tutorials and I ended up making the outfit too small for me. So yeah, even though this is stretchy, you still want to make sure you leave that seam allowance as well. Just to give you also a little wiggle room in case you make any mistakes when you're sewing. So yeah, basically I'm just cutting up the side. I cut up the middle and now I'm cutting halfway up the top. And then you guys will see, I'll just take the uh, shorts off of it and then I'll fold it over and literally use the second, the first half as a template for the second half so I can make sure that everything is symmetrical. So you guys see me do that in just a second. So I also wanted to mention that when you are cutting the top for the waistband area, please make sure that you cut at least um, like an inch and a half away from the um, waistband area of the shorts because that will help you have enough room to add the elastic and to do a seam allowance as well. So you guys will see what I mean when you actually see me sewing, but just make sure you leave more than like a half inch. You leave at least an inch and a quarter or an inch and a half at the top. So for the top part, it's really optional. I wasn't even sure what I wanted to do with it when I was doing this, but I just decided to cut off the sleeves and uh, cut off both sleeves so that I could eventually use them for the top part or the tube, tube top part of my top. Yeah, that's a mouthful, but you guys will see um, at the end what I mean. So yeah, I, if you this is optional, but if it was up to me, now that I think about it, I wouldn't have cut off the sleeves. I would have just cut down the middle of the shirt in the front, and then I would have just um, tied that, or I just would have used that as a crop top instead of just cutting off the sleeves. So that part is totally optional to you. If I was you, I would just keep it as a crop top. I was just being totally extra, especially if you're a beginner. Just keep it as a crop top how I already was. It would be really cute.
So now we're gonna go ahead over into the sewing machine. You guys could take these two pieces of fabric and set them to the side. As you can see, I'm sewing up the sides of the biker shorts. And then next after this, I'm going to basically sew the crotch area. And also a big major key is to sew in a zigzag stitch whenever you're sewing anything stretchy. It gives you a well clean off um, stitch and also it helps the stretchiness of the clothes to stay. If you use a, stretch, uh, a straight stitch, it wouldn't promote any stretchiness and it would just be like, it just wouldn't be easier to get into. So yeah, make sure that you are using a zigzag stitch to promote and to keep the stretchiness of the whole shirt or whatever and to, you know. Oh, also the ends of t-shirt fabric roll up. So it also helps to just seal that and prevent it from rolling. So yeah, just sew the crotch area. Sew all three sides and then you're gonna do something different with the legs. So don't sew the legs shut. Of course, we're going to hem the top and the bottom. We're going to live. We're going to hem the two legs and we're also going to hem the top waist part. And we're also going to add a waistband so you guys will see what that looks like in just a second. Okay, so here I'm showing you guys how I folded, I, I'm hemming. So I folded the one of the legs a half of inch onto the wrong side of the fabric. And I'm basically hemming the inside of it or the bottom part of it. You always want to make sure that you leave or you want to sew along the edge of the presser foot. And if you guys need to know what these terminologies mean, please go ahead and look up a video of a beginner sewing tutorial, machine sewing tutorial to be more specific. Um, yeah, so hemming the edge, I backstitch. I always make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end of when you start to sew. Yeah, my sewing machine is old, so I'll be having to, you know, get her life. But <laughs> yeah, that is what one of the legs are looking like. I just got finished hemming it and now I'm going to start the waistband. For the waistband, what you want to do is fold at least an inch and a quarter into the wrong side of the fabric. Make sure that your shorts are still turned on the, um, make sure that your shorts are turned inside out still. And as you guys can see here, I am sewing or hemming the top for my waistband. And you also want to make sure that you leave at least an inch opening at the end. Well, when you're b right before you um, bind off, you always want to make sure that you leave an um, a inch opening like I did right there. I stopped and I left the inch opening so that I could have enough room to add the elastic in that little opening. So now I'm just basically measuring the elastic to my waist and seeing how you know long I want it, want it to be. And I wanted my elastic to hug my waist pretty good. So also make sure that you, you're stretching your elastic a little bit when you are measuring it with your waist. So in order to run the elastic through the little hole that I made at the top of the fabric, I took one bobby pin and I bobby pinned it to the end of the elastic and then the opening of the hole. And then I took another bobby pin and I bobby pinned that to the and the other end of the elastic and then I started to basically run it through the hole or the ditch that I made and this is how I'm creating my waistband So now that I ran it through, I took the bobby pins off and I'm just showing you guys how I laid both of the bobby pin parts on top of each other. And I literally just so did a zigzag stitch. It didn't have to be neat. And I did a zigzag stitch across the two like end pieces, if that makes sense. So now I'm just 
sticking or forcing the last piece of elastic up into that hole that I made. And then I'm going to sew that hole shut. So you guys can see me stuffing it right here up in there. And now you can see the elastic is gone. And I'm going to go back over that stitch and I'm just going to um, zigzag stitch it shut. just to show y'all how the shorts came out which they came out really cute add the elastic in there y'all see so now um all i'm doing is taking this is one of the sleeves as you guys can see i'm gonna just take the sleeve since it's already hemmed here and it's hemmed at the bottom we're just gonna go ahead and use this for our top so we don't have to worry about hemming the top as well back panel from the shirt that i cut earlier and then i'm going to take the two sleeves so i'm going to take this sleeve put it on the right side put right sides together on one side of the sleeve or on one side of the strip and with the other sleeve and i'm going to do right sides together and sew up this side so that it can be a shirt that ties in the front and also ties in the back if i wanted to so now i'm just basically about to um I'm just going to hem the borders of this shirt so it can look clean when I put it on. And then I'm going to sew those two in the front and then I'll show you guys what it looks like at the end. Because I feel like you'll have a better idea of what I'm actually saying. So, yeah. So basically just imagine it this being a bandeau like that. Okay? Be right back. Okay guys, that was it for this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial and this DIY. If you made it this long to the video, I love you so much and thank you for watching the video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And just to let you guys know, you can use this sort of like template for the biker shorts on any kind of shirt that you want. So say if you wanted some black biker shorts or some bright pink or neon pink biker shorts, all you need is an extra large t-shirt and your your own like your set they have plenty of extra large t-shirts and all sappy neon colors at walmart just to let you guys know so yeah check walmart out for sure i just got this from ross and ross have has them for seven dollars so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial thank you guys so much for watching once again stay blessed stay educated and stay elevated you all and i will see y'all my next video bye